this video, let's look at OKRs, what they are, and why they are so popular at the moment. OKRs are a management tool that is used by some of the most successful companies at the moment. So we see companies like Google, companies like Airbnb and Uber, companies like Twitter and LinkedIn. They are all using OKRs. OKR stands for Objectives and Key Results. And this basically breaks it into two concepts. The first one is that we, for every goal you basically have as a business, you define an objective, what you want to achieve, and your key results, what success will look like. So let's look at some practical examples here. Let's look at a finance goal. So the goal might be, the objective might be to say, we want to increase revenue by 15% by the end of this financial year. Now we need to define what success will look like. So you think about your key results and what they could be. In this case, there might be, okay, we want to, the first uh, key result might be that we need to hit our revenue goals every month and we want to hit 150,000 uh, by the end of each month. The second one could be that you want to boost online sales and you want to grow online sales by 25% by the end of the quarter. And the third one might be to open new shops. So you say, okay, every quarter our ambition is to open two new shops and hopefully those key results together will help us to deliver the objective and will help us to understand whether we are on track or not. Another example we can look at is uh, related to people management and HR. Let's assume that the objective here is to grow staff engagement. So if you want to achieve that, you then need to define what success will look like. So your um, key results would be things like, I want to improve my employee net promoter score, one of the metrics we use to track engagement from six to eight by the end of the year. Another one might be to reduce staff absenteeism by 25%. And a third one could be to say we have a, a, a wellness program in our organization and what we need to do is we need to attract more people to this. So one of the key results would be to increase the membership of this wellness program by 40%. So hopefully this gives you a flavor of what they are. These tools are super popular at the moment and I, I think they've become popular because Google, one of the most successful companies on the planet, is using OKRs in their business very effectively. But Google has not invented OKRs. Basically, a, a venture capital, capitalist called John Doerr, he basically brought this to Google. He was an early investor into Google and when they had their first early board meetings, he basically said there's a really nice, simple way of identifying your goals and making sure they get, get managed. This is OKR and he introduced this in the 1990s. Again, John Doerr wasn't the person that invented OKRs. It actually came from Andy Grove, who was the president of Intel in the 70s. And John Doerr actually worked with Andy Grove at Intel before he became a venture capitalist. And this is where the concept was developed and Intel basically was the organization that started using OKRs. What is really important with OKRs is that we use them well. So we need to make sure they are flexible and agile. So it is not like setting goals once a year, OKRs are done much more dynamically. So if businesses change direction, you become more agile, you can change your goals, you can change the results that you, you are expecting, you can up your ambitions. And, and this means organization can change direction, they can become more agile. So for me, these have to be set monthly or at least quarterly in organizations. The other thing that makes them work well is when they are set bi-directionally. So they are not necessarily starting from the top and then we cascade them over time into the business. What some of these organizations like LinkedIn, Twitter and, and Uber and Airbnb are now doing is they, they are setting them simultaneously. So you define your goals at the top of the organization and then you set them there, you set your OKRs, but at the same time, the entire organization sets their objectives and key results. 
So this means that it's not all top down. You give people some freedom to interpret their own world and how their goals will link to the top ones. But it happens faster, quicker. The organization becomes more dynamic. Another really important aspect of OKRs is that they are public, they're transparent. So the CEO will have a number of OKRs and every business unit, every team, every individual will have them and they are somewhere accessible, publicly available so I can see your OKRs. So this makes it really transparent and makes sure that there's complete alignment in the organization. Another aspect of them is that they are ambitious or they should be ambitious. Lots of traditional goal setting methodologies, okay, I, I, I commit myself to as little as possible so I can make sure I deliver it. With OKRs, what you want to do is you want to bring in this ambition, okay, let's set some stretch goals here. And it is okay to only achieve 60 or 70% of your OKRs, but set them at a level where you really have to stretch yourself. This is what you want. You want the organization to really move forward, to become more successful. And the last thing that OKRs are not is that they are not employee evaluation tools. What they are is that they are safe place to set those ambitious targets. So they will not be used to hit people on the, on the back when they didn't deliver on their goals because it's fine to not deliver all of them. But what you want is you want to create this ambition. So these are tools that are used to guide regular discussions. They are ambitious. They are driving the organization forward. Hopefully this has given you an insight of what OKRs are. If you want to learn more, I have written a lot of articles on this on my website at bernardmar.com where you can find out what they are, lots of examples of how companies like Google are using them in practice, as well as how, they, differ, how they are different from traditional tools like management by objectives and other tools. So check it out at bernardmar.com or browse my channel here where I have a lot more videos on this topic too.